Hey, Audacious Church, so great to be with you today. And I have the honor of sharing devotions with you for the first seven days of 2022. Of course, we're praying with you that this new year will be a great new year, praying and believing that as you continue to put your trust and your faith and your confidence in the God of heaven and earth, that this will be a year where the Bible says that he will grant you the desires of your heart. And truly, as our godly desires match up with his desires for our lives, may this year be a confluence of those things coming together and us really truly seeing those dynamics taking place. So good that God is still on the throne. So good that we have breath in our lungs and we have the opportunity to serve God in this brand new year. Well, over the first two Sundays of 2022, I'm going to be doing a mini-series in the life of Audacious Church. And the mini-series is called God Works. God Works. And in these first seven days of devotions, I want to track the same Bible verse that I will be using in the first two Sundays. But we're going to look at some different elements of what I believe the Lord is speaking to us through this verse. Of course, church, I really want to encourage you. Make sure you make coming to church a regular habit week in, week out, because our habits make us. Our habits make us. And I think it's so important that as we honor God on what I consider the first day of the week, Sunday, as we honor God with our firsts, it's amazing how in turn God also honors our lives as well. And so we don't live with a fingers crossed mentality. We live trusting God, believing God, honoring Him. And of course, I also want to say, make sure you get to church on time for the praise and worship, ready to meet with God, meet with God's people and worship Him together. Well, the series is from Romans 8.28, and our first week of devotions is from the same passage. It says this, And we know that in all things, not some things, but all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purposes. Gosh, what a brilliant verse in the Bible. It is so loaded with faith-building thoughts for each and every one of us. But my question for you is this, is do you believe it? Do you believe that in all things God works together for the good of those who love him? Now you may answer and say, Glenn, of course I believe it. It's in the Bible. Let me reframe it another way then. Do you believe it to be true for you? Because over the next days, we're going to be believing for the good in all of our lives. And I do really like how the Bible frames it. The Bible frames it as the good. God works for the good. Look at the definite article there. Not any good, not a good, but the good. Now, of course, we know, don't we, that the Bible says that God is good and he can only do good. Psalm 119 verse 68 says that. He is good. He can only do good. So when the Bible says the good in Romans chapter 8, it's because God can only do good. He can only bring good. This year, God looks at our sorrow, our pain, our challenging circumstances and intervenes on behalf of the good. Now, if you know me, you know that I'm an optimist. A pessimist is someone who's always focusing on the negative thing. An optimist sees the donut. The pessimist sees the hole. Pessimists are an incredible breed. They are someone who, when given the choice of two evils, actually take both. They're the sort of people who feel bad when they feel good for fear of feeling worse when they feel better. Make sense? Confused? Uh, pessimists never get disappointed because they never have their hopes up. Someone once actually said to me that a pessimist is an optimist with experience. Hmm. I, I don't really know what I think about that, but I do know this. A pessimist never sails to uncharted lands or makes great discoveries or takes the human imagination and spirit to a whole new realm. Pessimist never does that. Another person once also said this, always borrow money from a pessimist. They never expect it back. Simply put, an optimist is someone who is hopeful and positive about future outcomes. 
The word optimism comes from the French word meaning the best thing. And I love this thought. Can you imagine this year living life with the best thing? The best thing in mind. Imagine thinking as a single person, I'm going to marry the best person. Imagine going through life thinking, I'm going to have the best job. And when you book a holiday, think to yourself, I'm going to have the best holiday. What a brilliant way to live. Yeah, I admit that thinking optimistically may set you up to be disappointed occasionally. But I want to say this, better to raise the bar on your expectations and see growth and expansion in life at the risk of being disappointed than never believing to see greater things to come. Better to live believing for the good instead of anticipating the alternative. And you know, church, the Bible really does talk about the need for us to live optimistically. You can call it being faith-filled, if you like, uh, having great vision. Call it what you like. And maybe in church, you've heard it described as different things. But I believe that what God wants you and I to do this year is live with optimism. What am I saying? Live believing for the good to come to pass, not just in our nation, not just in other people's lives and businesses and families, but in your life, in your family, in your business, in your health, in every area of your life. And we know that in all things, God works together for the good. Here's the quote of the day. Better to believe for the good instead of anticipating the alternative. Church, you are loved. Sophie and I love you. Your church family loves you. But more importantly, God loves you. And he's working together today for the good in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.